Hey guys, welcome to a new video. A Quinn boxed again? Yes. I've been really, really busy behind the scenes getting all the new Quinn LED stuff uh, sorted out and ready for you guys. And, um, well, I just, combined with work and other things, I just haven't been able to make a decent video. Uh, last week we had one, but, um... Yeah, other content than LEDs or Quinboxed will return to the channel. I actually have some stuff in the works for that. Um, but for now, um, well, this is it. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the Quinbox. Just get a drink, sit down with me. We'll open some packages and we'll get back to real content later on. And I'm also looking to do more live streams again. Stuff like that. Right. So, let's put me in the corner, because, hey, that's where I belong right now for not making real videos. And uh, I have three tools now, so let's start with this bag, because this bag was a bit of a surprise, because it has, so this, this bag, but it has all kinds of packages in it. And, uh, yeah, uh, it says, uh, okay, this is uh, 5 volt, 6 amps, uh, you can't read that. Uh, I think you can like that. 5 volt, 6 amps, 5 volt, 10 amps, 12 volt, 10 amps, and 12 volt, 7 amps. Let me refocus that camera a little bit. There we go. Should be nice and sharp now. Um, these are all from uh, BTF Lighting for LED projects or whatever else you want to use a power supply for, really. And they are all the, um, the chocolate bar or brick style or whatever you want to call that. And as I said, this is 12 volt, uh, 7 amps, so that makes 84 watts. That's a good amount. Uh, here we have the biggest one, 12 volt. Oh, you know what I did? I changed the, I changed the knife in this thing, so maybe it's now actually useful. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> so this is 12 volt 10 amp from BTF Lighting. Ooh, that's a lot chunkier. Wow, okay, yeah, 12 volt 10 amp, there it is. And, uh, well, I do really recommend snipping these connectors off, because unless you have a really expensive barrel connection on the PCB, it's really best to just use the wires that are in here than a converter block because those shouldn't be used above three to five amps. But that's fine. Came in a nice little box. Good. Okay, let me put that over here. Well, let's go through these real quick. Just rip them open. Because, well, it's more power supplies. Uh, <laughs> Partly because in my testing of the new Quinn LED modules, this is 5 volt, 10 amps, I have actually blown up a few power supplies, uh, especially during the reverse polarity testing. Uh, no Quinn LEDs have died during this testing, but uh, power supplies certainly have. So, yeah, if you build a power supply and then you don't add a fuse in the power supply or um, you don't have reverse polarity protection in the power supply uh, stuff is going to die okay um 30 watt 5 volts so that's 5 volt 6 amps so for smaller led projects like uh the heart shaped lamp we've done in the past for instance okay i'm going to stick with led stuff for now so that if people who are sick of led stuff which i can partly understand because there's a lot of it uh, they can just skip forward. I always uh, make sections in the YouTubes so you can go to the paragraph or a section of more interesting items. So, more LED stuff. That's not this. Where's my LED stuff? There we go. Here we go. Because, well, you guessed it. There could not be a Quinn boxed without LED strips. Because, hey. So, let's uh, get right to that. Because I think these are mostly just testing strips or strips I used somewhere to replace it. Or I needed more of them or different types. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? Huh. 
Well, this is an analog strip with warm uh, white and cold white. Oh, I think this was the really cheap one. Someone on Discord mentioned it. It was like five or six bucks and it was CRI 95. Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, we won't in this queen box, but you know, analog LEDs will also return at some point. Okay, oh, almost cut the cable. That's not good. Right, this is some uh, RGB CCT analog L LED strip again uh, in this single package. And I've had some of this before, but this should be higher wattage. Actually, the closets behind me and such, those are all lit with this kind of strip and using uh, analog queen LED boards. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay. What's in here? Could it be an LED strip? Ooh. Okay, 12 volt. I believe this is WS2815 because I needed some test strips for that. Uh, I'm just going to go over these real quick. It's probably also from a different supplier than BDF. I, I check out multiple suppliers. BDF is good, but sometimes there's a sale from another one or something like that. Oh, this packaging looks familiar. And it's 12 volt. It's another WS2815. As I've told you before, I often order the same item from multiple sellers. Partly because we have a 22 euro tax shipping thing still. It's going to go away uh, in Europe or at least in the Netherlands. And uh, also for delivery times and stuff like that. But AliExpress recently has been really good. One and a half, two weeks. I have most of my packages from China. So that is amazing. Now we're almost done with the LED content. Let's see if we can, uh, oh, look at that. We can just cut the whole box. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Yes. Cob chips, yes. So uh, I wanted some more analog cob chips. It says RA90. That should be pretty decent. Uh, but I believe this is actually an RGB variant. Yeah, because, well, you probably can't see that on the video. There is a G minus and then a 24 volt and then, yeah, R and B. So RGB, yep. So this should be an RGB Cobb LED strip analog again. And we'll be looking at that in the future. Generally, if it's good, I'll make a video about it. And if it's average or normal, uh, I'll list it on the website. If it's at least at least decent. And um, if it's shit, well, you'll probably never hear of it again. <laughs> but you can always ask me in the comments what I thought about it. Like, if you're watching this later or on the Discord server, that's always a good idea too. Ah, yes. Staying with LED content, uh, doing testing, especially if you have like a Dig Uno, you can quickly run out of ports. So I ordered some of these, let's call them multiplication terminals. So one wire goes in and then gets split to two, or in this case to three. So you could put in uh, negative, data, and a plus, and then actually run it to three different strips. Or even if you're just using a single strip, you can put in data here. And then you have three injection wires for a minus and plus. If you don't want to get a, a Queen LED. Wow, those snap really hard. Uh, a, a, a dig quad, for instance, which has power injection and uh, power distribution built in. So I ran out of these. So I was like, let's order some more. Then we have one more connector thing left, and then I think we're going to move on to different types of packages. Connectors, yes. Nope, too enthusiastic. Oh, 
I knew it. More. Uh, these are actually a different type. These are, uh, if you're connecting LED strips again, um, and you want to join two together, but you don't want to use those flimsy GST connectors and stuff like that, you can easily uh, join them together like this, but you can use them for all kinds of projects where you need to join some wires and the joint, it doesn't matter if it's that big, basically. Okay. I'm really rambling these off here. Terminals. Yes. There are some other big ticket items we'll, uh, we'll look at in a bit more detail later. Big ticket items. Yeah. Well, yeah, same thing. Again, ordered from multiple suppliers. Um, those were colored. These are non-colored. Same deal, connecting wires together. Easy peasy. Oh, we had an LED strip left, but it, it's in a box? A box strip? What's this? Boxed LED strip? What is going on? What? What is this? Ah. Oh, 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 yes! Yes, I've always wanted one of these. An SP002E LED controller. This thing must be the shiz. I, I guess I should, should just stop selling mine. Okay. Okay, guys, this is it. I'm depressed now. No. <laughs> I, I might actually try it. It's funny. Okay, so these are 100 string lights, right? I wanted to try these out. So I have an article about doing Christmas lighting uses, using those pixel bead style LEDs. These are slightly different, but there's the same idea of having those thin coated wires and then LED beads. But I've been hearing mixed results about these. Like, you can address them, but they're statically assigned a number. So if you have one string, it's 1 to 100. But if you then have a second string, it'll also respond to 1 to 100 instead of 100 to 200. But I kind of just wanted to see for myself. I found a sale of these and I was like, sure, let's get some. Okay, let's cram this in the box too. And uh, we'll, uh, I'll take a look how they look, and then I'll see if, uh, well, I, c I only bought one. I guess I can't test if you can daisy change them or not, but I could always cut it in half and then see if it works that way. Uh, okay, I think the LED stuff is done. So you guys, come back. Let's look at some other stuff. Let's look at industrial tweezers. I mean... You can take your, like, plebeian, normal, shitty tweezers, and we just use, like, industrial tweezers here. It's like, <laughs> your puny tweezers don't stand a chance. But actually, uh, we've seen these before. Oh, it's actually a less nice packaging than I had before. Okay. Uh, these are the titanium tweezers. And basically, they're the same as I already had. Uh, because I built some boards with that, and they were awesome. So, I, uh, I bought some more. You know, because at some point, they'll uh, they'll break, or go stump, or I don't know. Yeah, so, little tweezers. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tweezer. I'm not sure what to say. But they're really delicate so they're really good for the finer uh component laying work on a pcb and i like them for that cool these go onto the tweezer pile i actually have a tweezer pile can you imagine yes so now we're going into mystery package territory because this basically says nothing uh, yeah, I have no clue. We'll uh, just rip and tear it open. Let's see what's inside. Ah. Damn it. I told everyone no more LED content. And what do I unpack? It's a darn... Oh, whoa. 
that's another Chinese LED controller. Uh, sorry about that. I actually bought it for this part, not for that part, because this part can work with WLED. And, well, we don't really need this part, but, you know. Okay, let's uh, quickly throw the, move that aside. Now, I'm worried because uh, I have another package which looks exactly the same. Wow, this is even better packed than the other one. Give me my package. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, this isn't strictly LED content, but it's related, I guess. We should do that video soon. Okay. Um... Quickly again, it's been in previous Quinn boxes. This is a PUE splitter, as they call them. There it says PUE splitter. Basically, it takes in 44 to 56 volts and negotiates with your switch that it wants PUE. And then it gives 12 volt, 2 amps out. So 24 watts. Don't think this one will actually deliver 24 watts, but that is for a dedicated live stream. Okay, we're getting there. We have some integrated circuits. Yes, we cannot have a Quinn box without integrated circuits because what would the world come to? What would we do? Oh, well, I've actually shown these before. These are LAN chips I use uh, on my current ESP. E Quinn LED ESP. Oh, I can't say it myself anymore. Quinn LED ESP32 ABE boards. Those will be in trial very shortly. They have been made. But let's move on because that's a thing from a previous Quinn box. So we don't need to look at that. Oh, okay. What do we have here? I cannot get away from the LED content. Okay, these are... A, uh, I'll unpack one. I mean, we've been blazing through these packages. So uh, these are RS-485 to TTL boards. So basically you can uh, feed in TTL like an LED signal. It'll transform it into a differential uh, signal or RS-485. And then on the other end, you can use another one of these boards and transform it back. And with that, you could make a data signal easily 100 kilometers long or something like that so uh yeah i wanted to experiment with that and uh instead of building my own board i thought hey let's get some chinese boards see how those work and uh, if it's good i might build my own solution for that if it's not well this is a much cheaper and easier and quicker way to find out okay yeah Yes, I am getting some Chinese air. That's good. <laughs> okay. What did I order? Type C USB. Yes, but what? Type C USB. Why would I order this? I have plenty of these. I have no clue, but this is a type A to a type C female. Sure. Who knows what I was thinking. <laughs> right. Let's move on to boxes. I think this is going to be a really repeating Quinn box because I'm afraid now what's in here, I have also showcased before. Because, well, the, the side kind of gives it away. There's batteries in here. Let's box be gone. Okay. Well, you can probably already tell what it is. It's more of those USB rechargeable batteries. Uh, actually, for a different project, the temperature sensors I have been doing videos about, I still use those older style round ones, and they take a triple A. And, uh, or this, is this double A or triple A? 
don't remember. I think it's triple A. Yeah. Oh yeah. Triple A. Okay. Yeah, it's right here. Jesus. Anyway, they take a triple A and uh well instead of using disposable batteries, we can better use uh, rechargeable batteries. So that's what these are for. I tried them in some of my sensors. They seem to perform fine, especially because lithium ion basically doesn't have a, a quick idle drain, basically. So that makes them good for in like remotes or temperature sensors. And I thought, okay, let's get some more because, well, you've seen these in a previous pin box. <coughs> So get some more and replace all the batteries. Right, on to the big ticket items because we've had a lot of small crap. Let's take a look at this. This says, oh, oh no, it's already on the back. It says manual helper. Yes, don't look at that. It's, it's a manual helper. <coughs> okay. Yes, it kind of looks like something else, but that isn't it. It's a woe stick, and what a woe stick is, is basically a, me uh, a, a mechanical, no, it's an electrical screwdriver, I guess you could say. It might even be electronic. Okay, they give you a screw pad. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Give you, whoa, what the? I ordered a screwdriver. What did I get? Let's see here. Uh, oh, bits, okay, accessories. Okay, fine. And then I'm a toolbox accessories. Okay, wait, how does this open? Oh, over here, no, yes. Oh, okay. So there's a little... Oh no, it's not USB-C. Oh. Okay, but there's several tools in here. Okay, let's open this up too. Okay, so there's all kinds of bits. Okay, nice. This is probably the base, the charging base. Oh, it's nice and heavy. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at this bigger box. All right. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. It's a, it's a magnetic closing case. Cool. But where's the, the thing itself? Uh, accessories, accessories. I'm a dual power screwdriver. Okay. I was afraid there for a moment I didn't get one. But it's here, it's here. Okay, so there's a stick. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, that's, that's basically the function I bought it for. So then I guess I can take the case Put this here, put that there, oh, okay, that's pretty neat. And then there's more bits, so I guess you can take one bit cylinder with you. <coughs> so I, I guess you just select the bits you like best. Oh, that's pretty cool. I think I got all the little boxes now. Oh, well, there's this, but this looks suspiciously like a manual. And, well, um, like, mo oh, no, it's not a manual. Oh, right, it's a magnetic screw pad. So while you're screwing, you can take the screws you take out of stuff and put them on here, and they won't roll away, roll away. And you can actually sort them a little bit, like where they came from and stuff like that. That's cool. So this was more of a kit than just the screwdriver itself. Uh, but yeah, as always, things will be linked in the description. I made a giant mess of my table, uh, but I'm going to try and get it off of the screen. 
<laughs> Maybe. Somewhat. There we go. It's like almost real, right? Okay. <laughs> Can't see myself on my monitor anymore. But there is a fix in the in the queen box for that. But let's let's quickly take a look at the second last package. And that is this one. And it says heating table. Now, I can hear you asking, what the hell is a heating table? Well, I'll show you. Well, okay. Replacing the knife in this little unboxing tool has made it so much better. It's now cut and tear instead of rip and tear. Okay, this is the bottom. Mm, let's see if there's more in the... Oh, oh no. Oh no. Okay, are we still recording? Let's see if there's more in the box. Yes, there is. Oh, yes, Chinesium power cords. Okay, that's it. Let's put all the plastic back. Okay. So, what is it? Well, let's, let's unwrap this thing. Basically, it's a miniature hot plate uh, for baking, <laughs> or, well, as they officially call it, for preheating PCBs. So if you're doing PCBs, as I've shown in the past, you can do that with a uh, hot air gun to heat up the PCB from the top and get the solder paste to melt that way. I need more cutting tool. There we go. But... And what it, what this is officially for is it's better to do to I like heat up the whole PCB first and then hit it with a hot air gun or and this will likely do that uh, g actually have the solder melt on top of your PCB because of the heat that's coming from the bottom. That way the components aren't getting blasted with heat. Just the board is, and the board wall. The board should be able to handle that just fine. There's a lot of plastic on here. Sorry about that. I eh. think I got it. So there's a little control control panel here. Oh, more plastic. Oh, it's just a slip. Okay. <clears throat> it has a preset temperature, actual temperature on offset up and down. Uh, it's a mechanic ET10. And the 10 stands for 10 by 10 centimeters. And most of my PCB projects fall within that margin. So I thought, okay, it's like 30 or 40 bucks. It looks decently constructed. And I've read decent reviews. I'll do an earth check and stuff like that. Um, but I thought it could be nice while doing my PCB prototyping and stuff like that. Now, if you'd like me to do a review and test it out during a video, let me know down in the comments. It comes with a power cord. Cool. I'm excited about that one. I've been waiting for that for a while because, well, Queen Box is like a double-edged sword. I get a lot of packages. That's cool. But then I have to wait to unpack them until I can film it. That's not cool. But, eh, eh. So, whoa, last box is a big one. It actually won't fit on screen. Well, I'll just unpack it because I actually already removed the exterior box and then resealed it. Ha 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 ha. So, let's take a look at what's in here. Well, it's upside down, but maybe you can tell. Whoa, let's get this away. Yes, it's a portable monitor. And basically, uh, in my setup, I have a monitor right there. And that is for monitoring the overview of what I'm recording. And, and that's a 10-inch, I believe. I actually bought it a few years ago. It was also on a Queen Box. Or actually, I did a dedicated video about it, I think, at that time. And this is basically a replacement for that in the form of a 15-inch... Uh, 4K model, if I remember correctly. So, let's see what you get with it. You get a USB-C to USB-C cable. 
an HDMI cable, and another USB-C to USB-C cable. Okay, one is for power, I believe, and one is for power and display, if you have USB-C, which transports both. Let's see. Oh, wow. We can a power adapter. Oh, didn't think we were going to need that. But, oh, yeah. Power adapter. It's a USB-C power adapter, and it does PD 3.0. Okay. Or that's the model, I guess, but it does power delivery, and it can do up to 15 volts, 2 amps, or 30 watts. Okay, that's decent. I'm hoping I can power that with a power supply I have anyway. And, well, there's a manual, so let's remove the box and take a quick look at this thing. Uh, okay, not too attached to this plastic. Oh, okay, it comes in a sleeve, like a faux, faux leather sleeve. There we go, that's the screen. Yeah, it's a metal body. And I believe what you're supposed to do is set it up, well, well, not like that, like that. Well, I guess you can't really see that very well from the top down view, but... Uh, sorry, just playing around with it. Let's take a quick look at the I.O. We have, uh, on this side, we have a few buttons, but they're unlabeled. Okay, they're labeled, but the cover is uh, over it, basically. And then on this side, we have full-size HDMI. That's nice. Um, display port. That's an old-style connector, okay? And then USB-C and USB-C. And I believe one is for power and data, and the other is just for power. And then there's a headphone jack, too. Cool. Okay. I wonder what would happen if I'm just going to plug in the feed from the monitor I have over there. I'm going to stop recording real quick, and then I'll restart recording while I do that, because I just don't want to corrupt this file <laughs> if something goes wrong. <laughs> yes, we're recording again. So first, let me pull out the power. That's never going to be enough power, but um, let's see. Is it cord long enough? Eh, maybe, maybe not. If I do it like that. Is it going to turn on? Yeah? Hey, no signal. Wow, nice. Okay. I mean, yeah, this is HDMI. Okay. I'm going to try and do this, but my whole table is a giant mess because I just did a Quinbox. Uh, no. See if this works. Okay, other way around. It's always the other way around. Yep, there we go. Do do do. Oh, uh oh. It kind of worked. Okay, it's turning on and off, probably because what I plugged it into doesn't have enough power. That was kind of expected. Um, but. I should have a better cord here. Still won't give it, uh, let's see, if we do this. Because I have a power supply here, which is a bit better. And then let's plug that in again. No, okay, it's drawing 1.3 amps, 2.8 amps. Wow, okay, yeah. So it's not getting enough power over USB. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on just a second. Right, I, I had to dig out a USB-C to USB-C connector because, well, to be fair, it was delivered with a USB-C power supply. So it probably needs a higher voltage than the standard 5 volt USB-A will deliver to it. Okay, let's plug it into my PD power supply here. Yes. There we have it. I can't really show you, but let's see. Where is it? 
I don't know how to. Oh, oh, there it is. Display setting. Oh, it's on the wrong monitor, of course. I don't know where the screen is. No, there it is. So that's this one, I think. Okay, it's 3840 by 2160, and from the mouse, it looks to be 60 frames per second. That's good. <laughs> anyway, this isn't really going to be a review. Uh, let me, let me, so what I do with it in OBS, I can say full screen projector, go to, uh, uh, well, this guy, and then, oh, yes, we have infinity power. Anyway, uh, then you can see me moving around and stuff like that. Right, so anyway, um, this is it for this queen box again. If there's any item you saw that you'd like a full review over, let me know down in the comments. I do listen to those and I do look at those to see uh, what my viewers are interested in. Yes, there's going to be a lot of LED content, but I should be getting more time soon so that I can do lots of varied content again because, well, there's stuff I need to do. I need to finish my DIY cloud backup project and I need to start my HAHA project. And then there's some other new temperature sensors I got in. And there's, there's lots of stuff I want to do. So thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out with me. And uh, I hope to catch you guys during a live stream or down in the comments or in the Discord server. And uh, yeah, see you guys later. Bye-bye.